Nothing like a good read of schematics. Welcome to Hacker Week. You know, at first glance, a schematic can be a pretty intimidating thing to look at. For instance, here's a power supply. Now, to those of you that don't know what any of this stuff means, it just looks like a bunch of lines and silly little symbols and what the hell's it all about? Well, today I'm going to show you how to read a schematic, just the basics anyway. And the best place to start out is all those lines that connect the components together. So let's take a look at a simple drawing I've done here. Here's a resistor, here is a transistor and a capacitor, another resistor. Now, let's say that this connection has to cross over this line. Sometimes people will just simply draw them like that. And how do you know if that's connected right there or not? Well, there's a couple of ways to take care of that. Sometimes people draw them like this. It's just a line going over a line and it's assumed that those lines don't connect. Now, if you want to show that those lines do connect, you put a big old dot right there. Now what that says is yes, all four of these, this is a junction where these things have to connect with each other. Now there's another way to draw it if it doesn't connect, and that is to just simply draw a hump over the other line. That says that this wire comes across, jumps over, and goes here, and is not connected to this line. Okay, so that's some of the basics that we need to start with on how things connect. This is very important because a lot of people make mistakes with those lines when they cross each other. So if you don't see that dot there, they aren't connected. If you do see a dot there, it is connected. And of course the hump would indicate that they're not. All right, let's look at some components now. We'll start out with the most basic component out there, a resistor. A resistor resists the flow of electrons through it. That resistance is expressed in a value called ohms. We'll get into that in another video. This is what the uh, symbol looks like. Just a straight line with some ziggy zaggy lines going like this to another straight line. That is a resistor. Now, sometimes you'll see next to it an R with a number next to it. R2, let's say that it says that. That would be that that's resistor number two. And then usually there will be something like uh, this written next to it. Um, 100K. So that means K is a thousand, that's 100,000 ohms. Sometimes you'll see it expressed as ohms. The symbol for ohms looks like this. So you may see something that just says uh, one ohm. So that's exactly what that would be. So that's what a resistor is, and that's usually the way they're drawn. Now, a variable resistor, that being like a, a volume knob that you would turn on a amplifier or something like that. Sometimes there's little trim pots. Anything that's variable usually has an arrow pointing at it like that. That means that it has three leads on it. This one right here makes it a variable. So that's a variable resistor or a potentiometer. Another thing you'll see on a resistor symbol is the watt rating. So you may have a resistor here and it might say 100. If you don't see anything after it, that would mean it's 100 ohms. And then it will have a watt rating. And that watt rating may be 1 fourth with a W. It could be 1 half. It could be 1. But it will have a W next to it. A photocell, or a light-dependent resistor, also abbreviated LDR, will have the resistor symbol. We'll draw it a different way this time. And it will have two arrows pointing at it at an angle, indicating that light will change the resistance of this. Now, of course, without power, a circuit doesn't do too much. Sometimes it can, but most of the time it needs a power supply. There's a symbol for batteries. That looks like this. And a smaller line and something like that. The smaller line is the negative. The bigger line is the positive. That's the symbol for a battery. That's a single cell. You may see them drawn with multiple cells, and they'll look like this. Small, 
big, small, big, and small and positive, negative. This has one, two, three cells. So that's a battery. Next up, the capacitor. Capacitors have the capacity to store an electrical charge in the circuit. There's two types. There's non-polarized and there's polarized. The non-polarized type look like this. Two straight lines. The polarized type have one straight line, one curved line. The straight line side is positive. The curved line side is negative. Another important component is the diode. The diode acts like a one-way valve. Electrons can flow in one direction, but not in the other. This is what the symbol for that looks like. But basically, this would be the ground side right here. That's the cathode. The big line is the cathode. On the diode itself, there will be a line, and that is the cathode side or the negative side. A light emitting diode, or an LED, would look like this. It would have the same symbol as a diode, but we'll have a couple of arrows pointing off from it, indicating that it is emitting light. Now we'll move on to the transistor. The transistor is really important because it can act like a switch or an amplifier in a circuit, and it can work from positive or a negative signal. This is what the symbol for a transistor looks like. It's a circle, there's a line coming into it, a line in the middle, two more lines, and then there will be an arrow. Now this arrow is really important because this is what tells you if it's an NPN or a PNP transistor. NPN means negative, positive, negative. PNP means positive, negative, positive. The arrows determine what that is. This one, with the arrow pointing out of the circle, is an NPN. A PNP transistor would look almost the same, but it would have the arrow pointing in on this side. Now there is an emitter, a base, and a collector on a transistor. Where the arrow is, that's always going to be the emitter. The other one, the collector. And the one that leads in here to this plate, that's the base. The base is what turns the transistor on and off. Switches are very common and they're important because they turn things on and off. The symbol for that is actually quite simple. It's just a line, a dot, a contact, input, output or input output. It doesn't really matter which way things are connected. This would be the part that closes across this gap and allows current to flow through the switch. This is a normally open switch and it would be labeled simply NO. Now if it was a normally closed switch, it would come across like that and be labeled NC. Robotics use a lot of motors. A motor symbol looks like this. Just a circle with a great big M in the middle. That's a motor. If it's a stepper motor, it will have a line under it that looks like this. In an amplifier circuit, you'll see the symbol for a speaker, and it looks quite like a speaker, actually. This would be the magnet, and this would be the driver. That's a speaker. Sometimes you'll see two leads coming off marked positive and negative. Here's a very important symbol in a circuit, the ground symbol. That would be the negative side of the circuit or the whole ground plane. That looks like this. It looks a bit like an arrow. How about a transformer? No, not the ones in the movies, the ones that will transform voltage either stepped up or stepped down through induction. Those usually have an iron core and they look like this. These two symbols simulate the iron core and these are the primary and secondary windings. 
Fuses help protect a circuit. They're rated in amps, as in how many amps they will carry before they actually melt and break the contact between each side. There's a symbol for them that looks like this. Let's talk about some of the ratings of these components. Now, resistors are expressed in ohms. We already saw that, but I'll draw it again. This is the symbol for ohms. Capacitors are rated in farads, or microfarads, most of the time. The older way to do it was just simply MF. You don't see that too much anymore. Now you see it more as microfarad, which is the symbol for micro. It kind of looks like a U with an F next to it. Sometimes you'll see PF, and that is picofarads. That's even smaller than a microfarad. Well, that's about it. A short and sweet primer on how to read schematics. If you want to learn more, do a Google image search and type in schematic symbols. You'll see all kinds of pictures, and if you click through on some of them to the sites, you'll learn more about how to read them and what all that stuff means. At least now you have a basic understanding of how things hook up. And I got a lot of questions on some of my schematics in the past where people are like, where's the ground? Where does the negative connect to, etc." So now you've got a little bit of an idea of how to understand that. So I encourage you to go out and learn more because there's always more to learn. You never know it all. So I hope you enjoyed that. And until next time. Another comport... comportant?